Ah, yeah, that's fact. Yo, what's up? It's me, a DLC again, back in the house with you. This is our new tape. This is the MPC 2000 XL, and of course, your Korg Triton. You know what I'm saying? Well, look, we know you love the other videos. You're going to love this one, too. We're going to show you the techniques used today by some of the top producers to use these two machines. How to use some effects in the Korg Triton, how to adjust those levels, and record that MIDI data into our MPC 2000 XL. It's a really cool video. Check it out. Time to get busy. to me. What's good, Vault? Yeah, what up? I think so. We're ready. We got a MIDI cable. It's time to set the MIDI information. We must record it, but first, we have got to set it up. MIDI out the MPC to MIDI into the Triton. MIDI out the Triton into the MPC. You got that? It's important. We must make sure our MIDI setup and our audio setup is proper, because then we can get busy. <laughs> We're ready now. Okay, now the first thing we need to do in order for us to set up our MPC 2000 XL and our Triton is to put our audio input in to our MPC. That means you want to get the left and right stereo output to go into our system. And there we go, we got one and two. Okay, next we want to put our main outputs, left and right, so we can hear back the sounds from our Korg Triton. Good one, Vault. You see, we got left and right. Now, let's get Okay, now we want to actually put our MIDI cable output from the MPC out of output MIDI out A. Put the MIDI cable in, and now We'll connect the MIDI in to one. That's two. We want to go to one, though. So we're going to go to one, MIDI input one, which is the first one. Now, always be sure where you're going to put your MIDI cables in at. In this case, we're putting the MIDI output from the MPC out of A, and the MIDI that goes back into the MPC go into MIDI input one. Okay, now we're going to take the input into the Triton, which is coming from the output of the MPC 2000 XL. Now that is coming from the output, which is output A on our MPC. Now, we're going to send the output of the Triton back into the MPC by hooking up the other end of that MIDI cable. Put that in now. Good one, Vault. As you can see here, we've got the output of the Triton going to the input of our MPC 2000 XL on the MIDI N1, and then we've got the input into our Korg Triton coming from the output of our MPC 2000 XL from output A. Okay, we've got our machines hooked up. Next thing you want to do is probably make up a beat. We'll press record and play, and we get a metronome, as you can see there. What we really want to do is we want to get a really cool tempo. Let's zoom in, Vault. Now, as we can see right here, we got a tempo of 120. I'll move the cursor over and get a tempo I really think I want to use. I'll turn my data wheel. I think I may go at about 80. Here I'm at 80 BPMs. And I have my count on also, so I can do my count. I have that click, 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 click. When I go to my window screen, and we see that we have this in record. In record only, we have a count in. In play, we have no count in. And we're using a quarter note rate, as you can see right there. Let's close that window. And next, I want to make a beat up. Okay, before I do that, I want to make sure I have the drum set up properly. Now, on the MPC, we can have several different types of programs. We can have four programs. Each program contains drum sounds or any kind of sample I like that program to contain. For example, here we have our Timbo kit, our famous kit here at Sample Kings. That's in drum two, as you can see right there. We can have one, two, three, 
and four programs, you know? In this case, we have our demo sounds on one and our timbo kit in two. Next to it, as you can see, we have this set to off. This one going to be a MIDI parameter. In this case, we don't want it to send MIDI from the drum pads to our keyboard. So now, I'll make a beat up. Why don't you zoom back out, Vault? I'll make a real simple beat up for the cats to understand what's going on here. Okay, here we go. I'll press record and play. Press my tap repeat. I'm gonna play a hi hat over and over. So now I've got a beat. Now zoom back in for me. Now, as we can see right here, we've got, let me pull the screen back up, see it better. There you go. We've got 80 BPM right here. We got a count in. And we're on track one. All right. I'm gonna press stop on my NPC. I'm gonna go to my next track. And here we have track two. I want to make this track two MIDI. I go down to here. Turn my cursor there. You can see we're in MIDI now. Now, as you remember before, we have MIDI going out of A. I'll turn the cursor to where it says off. I'll turn the data wheel, see what it says there? 1A. That means that MIDI information here can be recorded to or sent out of 1A, which is MIDI channel 1 and output A. Our device could be our Quark Triton, as you can see right there. We can also control the volume of, or actually the velocity of A. We have program here also. We can pick a sound that's from 1 to 128, as you can see right there. We can pick any sound we'd like to from here to 128. And program means a particular patch or sound within your keyboard system. Next, we'll hook up our Quark Triton and we're going to send MIDI information to it. So I've got my machine set up now. I've got many outputs in, as you saw earlier. Next, what I want to do is pick a particular sound uh, using my MPC. Now, zoom in for me, Vault, uh, into the screen right here. We can see our screen. Great, there we go. And we can see on the screen right here, we've got, like, I've set the program here to 7. See that there? I can pick a sound there. Now, um, I can turn the cursor again. I'm in off, see that? I go to 1. That's one sound. Number 2. Three, four. A new sound. Now zoom back out for me. Now how I'm playing these sounds hitting the pads. You see this? Now those pads are actually being triggered by my finger, but I'm sending the mini information from these pads directly to my core Triton. And this is how we can play that information on our Cork Triton. Now, how this actually works, if you zoom back in for me again, I can go here to my um, program screen. I'll press, zoom out just a little bit for me, a little bit more, so you can see my fingertips, these, these dials here. Yeah, there you go, good. I'm going to press Shift, and I'm going to press Program. Now, you can see, zoom back in for me again. You can see here we got our program set up. I'll press drum one, and you can see the assignment. Now what happens here is that we see that the pad B16 is triggering note 39. That's note 39 on our keyboard that it's actually triggering. And you can see here below that 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 also pad also triggers a certain sound, which is the sax. Now note 39 corresponds to the 39th key on a keyboard. All the keyboards have a particular number from 1 to 88. If you have an 88 key, 
In this case, uh, we have whatever the 66 key keyboard or 61 key keyboard, we're actually triggering a specific note. And what happens, the NPC sends this information out. And this is in our assign section in the program. Now I go press main screen again. We're back on main screen. And as I said before, here we're picking sounds on our Corp Triton. We're actually in a particular bank, and from 1 to 28 we can pick any sound we'd like to in that particular bank that's already been set up on our Corp Triton. This is just to show you that we can actually trigger sounds on the NPC by hitting a pad in the NPC and triggering a sound in the Corp Triton. Now, zoom back for us, Walt. I made the beat up, right? I've got my beat going on here. I got my sound picked out. Here's the sound right there. I'll put it right here. I'll press record and play. Here's record. And I'll press this and play start. One, two, three, four. See that? So I'm actually triggering sound in the core triton. You can see I hit that note real hard there and it's triggered. Now if we zoom back here to the front of our, our view here and on our MPC, I'll press step. And I'll move to the very first note. See that first note there? That's the first note I hit. And that's note number 48, which is known as C2, which is a C, the key C. And then this is D. This is our duration. That's how long I held that note down for. And this is the velocity, how hard I hit it. Now, actually, on my MPC, it's at the full level. So that means whenever I hit the pad, it's going to be the top peak level. And you can see here, this line here corresponds to that. I can move the cursor over here. And once I see the line go back down, see that there? I can control the velocity. Here's the duration. I can control the duration. I get the longer or shorter. Now I'll load this down a while. Listen back to it. I'll make it so short enough. See? I cut that first note down. It was very short. Go back to step. And you can see this first note is very short compared to what it was actually was in the beginning. I'll raise this back up. I want to make that note have a longer duration. This way, it'll last longer. Give me that real... Here we go. And that's how we can edit our MIDI information on our MPC. Okay, guys. Now, the reason why it works is because we have this MIDI output here. We're in MIDI, and we're going to MIDI A. See that? We're going to MIDI A. And that's the MIDI channel 1 out of output A. That's where we have that MIDI cable going from the out of our MPC to the input of our Korg Triton. Okay? I can also control the velocity of the sounds. And as you can see there, we switched your velocity earlier on the step edit. I can control it here too. Watch this. See? And some sounds, when you have a softer velocity, they give you a different attack feel on those particular sounds. So sometimes I may want to make my attack feel a little different here. Or turn up a louder and I get a stronger one. Watch this. Now I get louder. See that? Now I'll bring it down. I get that humming like almost that mood type bass. And bring it down lower. I'll press stop. I'll press step edit here. I go back to the first bar. As you can see, it did not change anything. It didn't change the velocity or the duration. See, this remains the same. All it does, I'll press main screen again, it changes the velocity out of the entire track. So this controls more so than this does. See? But it makes this is a consistent feel here. That's why I want that to be always full level. And here, I can change at the main screen. 
I can change the overall to be any particular parameter I want between 0, or rather 1, and 200. In this case, mostly just 100 is going to work the most for you. But I can just control that parameter and give a nice feel to that one sound. Next, we'll check out our Korg Triton along with the MPC. Okay, now it's time for us to record the parts. We're going to record a part on main channel 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Alright, check this out. Okay, now I'm ready. I want to record some other tracks into our little beat we have going here. We want to set our MPC up so it's ready to receive the MIDI data coming from our Korg Triton. Here's what we need to do. We're going to go to our next track, which is track 3. See that? It says drums. I'll move the cursor down and make sure this says MIDI. You got that? It must say MIDI. We're going to back to here and we're going to pick MIDI channel 2. 2A. Remember that. We are in MIDI out A. We're going to make sure once you record the information in that it goes back out of that same 2A so the Cork Triton will receive the MIDI data and we can trigger or play that particular sound in the Cork Triton. Here also, I'm going to go to my next track, which is track 4. Move my cursor back over here. And I'll set this up for MIDI channel 3A. I'll go back up to here. Here's 5. I want to set this one up here for guess what? 4. I go to me track, excuse me, track six. On my MPC. This will be five. And I can go to seven and set this one up. And that'll be six. So I have the ability now to record, of course, six mini tracks. We can also do 16 separate mini tracks out of A and 16 separate mini tracks out of B. Now in this case, we're just going to use A. I can go back up again. I can go to 8, go down. And this could be 7. See that? Now, in case I want to do something really cool, I can also make another track also be the same. And make this sound if I want to. If I want to have the same sound and use two different keyboard lines for the same sound. That means track 9 could be a melody of the keys and track 8 could just be a keyboard pad. Got that? Okay. So, as you can see, we have separate mini channels set up for our MPC. Now, we use our Korg Triton and we're going to play the keys on that as we press record and play on our MPC. Okay, now we got our MP set up for Mini Channel 2, and we're going to play our Korg Triton now. I'm going to press record and play on the MPC. Our bass line's playing. I'm going to go over here and start playing some keyboard parts. I'm going to write notes I want to use. Okay, I want to use now. We'll go back to the NPC. We're gonna press record and play start. I'll do it for me to see it better. And I'm ready to go. Two, three, four. Now I'll press stop. I can record over that. I'll press record and play. I'm just going to write notes for it, so let me see. Okay, here we go. Chord and play. Two, three, four. So you see, record information onto our NPC using our chord triangle. 
But now I'm going to go to my next track, which is MIDI Channel 3 on track 4. Okay, now we got another sound here. Okay, cool. Now I'll press record and play on my NPC. And now I'm on track number four. Press record and play. One, two, three, four. Let's do that again. I went back here to press record and play. Two, three, four. sounds playing now at the same time. I'll press stop here. What's happening is that the MPC is recording the MIDI sequence data. And then it's sending the information back out through that MIDI cable back into our Triton. And of course, as we showed earlier, our Triton is set up for sequence mode. Now, we'll do the next sound. Okay, now I've got my string picked out. I'll press record. And play start. Two, three, four. Now we have four sounds picked out. Real simple patterns. So I see layering our sounds. We're using our Triton to have several instruments. For example, we have the bass line, we have the keyboards a little guitar part, and a string. Now I'll add a fifth instrument on MIDI channel 5. Alright, now we're going to add track 5, press record, play start. I'm set on track 6, I'm recording MIDI channel 5. Okay, now I'll record a new track. This is going to be MIDI channel 6A on track number 7. We'll press record, play. I'm going to go down here, over on the keyboard, and play number 7. A little effect to the sound. Here we go. Track 7. I'm going to press record and play. Okay. Now, we got a lot of stuff going here. I'm almost too much stuff. I'll record though again on track number 9. And remember, track number 9 is also MIDI channel 7. And let's do that. I'll press record and play. Right down here, the keyboard. all these tracks down. Now, let's check out some parameters. Now you can also pitch bend on your keyboard. Turn that pitch bend knob on your cork Triton. You can record that data also into your MPC. You got that? Now we prefer to use the MPC as a sequencer because that way it's locked into the MPC. It can control all the sound in the cork Triton. So in record information, 
We can press the pitch band and do volume. Check this out. Okay, we have our piano part. Now watch this. I want to add some sort of bend to that piano part. I've already recorded into my MPC. I'll press play and record. I'm pressing overdub though. See this? I'm pressing overdub and I'll press play from anywhere I want to play it from. Now here I have a pitch bend. Now watch this. So we can actually record the information on top of our track. I'm going to undo that actually for this situation. But I want to make sure I record that information that I doesn't lock it into some sort of like, you know, sequencer. I'm going to go back to my MPC as you can see right up here. I'm going to set this MPC up. I'm going to go up to my timing correction and put it to off. And now I'm going to record that part in there. That way the MPC won't correct and say it should be on this particular section. It'll just put it where I put it at. Now I'll try it again. I'll press record and play. Start. Two, three, four. That's kind of cool, right? It's a sort of pitch bend of that particular note. You'll play the note, and then you can actually record this pitch bend information also into the same track. But I pressed overdub, and I pressed play start to do that. And that way, I can pitch bend any note I want to pitch bend. Any note at all, pick the note or pick the actual phrase, and when it comes up, I pitch bend it. I can also do this. Watch as I press play. What you can also do is you can use multiple sounds for one mini track. You can say, for example, track number seven is, rather, excuse me, mini channel number seven is a keyboard sound. We can make mini channel number eight and track number eight on our Triton, turn that into mini channel seven also, and then make that track have another sound. This way we can have more than one sound receiving the information for MIDI channel 7. That way we can layer our sounds. We can have a keyboard. We can have a string. that may make track 9, MIDI 7. 10, MIDI 7. We can layer these sounds and make them thicker for that one part. Check this out. This is important. Now, what we'll do next, we're here an organ. We have an organ sound right here. And what you can do a lot of times when playing back a track, you can pick a different sound. I'll go back to program. Come my organ here. Try this over here. Pick a different sound. Like that one right there. So you're going to pick the sound you want to pick for whatever you're using something for. I can also go to my next track, which is my, what's it called here? We've got a thing called the vocal, which is right there. We've got a fresh breeze. And I can go back up here and hear how this sound actually sounds. Go to my Triton, I mean my MPC, and I will slow that track. I'll turn it on. And now, there's one effect I did earlier. But you hear a sound there? I also change this effect. That's some effects I have going in the groove. This makes it really cool. I can adjust the sounds I have here. Change the sound here, really even. I'll pick a sound I might like even more. Put this sound actually it gets a little effect to it. I'll press OK. Now 
So I've got another sound here, which is my keyboard sound. It's on track number seven. That's a keyboard attack. That's my mini channel on number seven. That's on track number eight. I also have on channel nine the same. And you'll see here, if you have that keyboard selected, right there for seven, two different parts. Go like the menu to track parameters. So you have seven right there. I can make this one here read seven also. See, I can have other channels with different instruments. I go back to exit that. Back to my regular sounds here, my mixing mode. I go to here. I can change that sound now. And get a different piano to add to that one. I'll pick any sound of pad I want to pick. Here we actually made the um, keyboard, another keyboard track. We went to menu, select track parameter, and we made main channel seven. We can see right here, which is track seven, which is main channel seven, and track eight, which used to be main channel eight. I made it main channel seven. This way I can combine two sounds to cover one. In case I want to make that one sound thicker, I can change it to a bass or a keyboard, even a string, for example. I can go back to um, exit this, go back to program, select the instrument. I say, well, I might want a string. I'll press strings. I'll use a string for that sound. I'll use a pizzicato string, we'll say. I'll press OK. I'll play it back. I'll press play on my MPC. And you can hear the little pluck of the string behind in the background. I go to string here also. So we have a string and a piano playing track number nine, which is me and channel seven, at the same time. So I can think up that one sound. Play solo off. A lot of times we want to do, we want to mix our sounds up. Let's check that out. Now, sometimes I like to add effects. You know, adding an effect to an effect in the Triton is great. To a sound rather than a Triton is great. You can let that sound, add an effect to it, you know, give it some sort of reverb or a flange, particularly guitars. They don't sound so great because they're not like real guitars, they're keyboard guitars, but with an effect, it gives it that sort of nuance where it's like a little bit different, but still funkier. I prefer to add effects of certain instruments. Now, for you, pick the effect you like for your sound. It'll help you develop your own sound with your combo MPC Triton. Check it out. Now we're going to go to our MPC, and we're going to solo this guitar track we laid down. And we're going to go up here. Pan to the MPC for me. Thanks, Walt. Right there to our MPC. Uh, let's see. I'm over here. I'm going to go to here. I'm going to play the actual sounds. I'm going to solo that particular track. Let's try number four. So that's right there, we sold it. Now we go back here on our Korg Triton. I'm gonna zoom, that's perfect zooming in there, great. And next, we're going to press menu. I wanna insert effect, an effect on this particular guitar. Okay, great. I went to effect. Let's take out my routing figured out here. I can go right here. 
as you can see, I can select any writing I want to select. Turn on my cursor dial, and I can move it up. And I want to put that effect here, I want to use FX1, as you can see right here. Now I'm there. Of course, you can press this button here. You can do any effect for any sound. See that? Put that sound, and they're ready to go. Right now, I'm going to do track three and put the effect there. Now what we'll do is I'll press insert effect. And see now we have the effect I want to insert there. I can pick and select any effect I want to select. But I'll turn it on first. See it's on. Hear that sound now? We're flanging that sound with an envelope to it. Or we can phase it. You hear the difference now. Well, here's a biphase. Tremolo. It's a stereo tremolo right here. We we'll checked our send even better. We can use our sends. Send one or send two. You want to send to a particular output. In this case, we want to select a sound. We want to go more with a. With a more of a random flange. We can also pan it internally within our system. We gotta go left or go right, as you can see right there. In this case, I wanna make sure we're set up for that particular dead even sound, just for now. But generally, I like to pan my stuff either a little bit left or a little bit right. So the effect isn't too much in the center. Next, we'll zoom out a little bit and we'll show how we got get out of this. We'll press exit. And now we're back in our main screen. Now I'm going to go back to my MPC. And we're going to take off the solo we had it on. We got our bend, and we got our effect on the guitar. Let's go to our next system. Okay, guys, as you can see right here, I can also press effect one. I can also adjust my parameters for those effects. I can adjust the delay time, the LFO information, the LFO phrasing of the information. So that cell I have, I can actually just fix maybe the way I want to hear it or how I want to have it so it's solo. For example, I'll press and then we're back here with that same sound. I can go back into here and set up my LFO. I can set up my phasing. I can set the delay to it. See, I can go back to here to my um, directional phase. Uh, we got a frequency. The frequency change right there. So we can also adjust the parameters of any effect we would pick out. It's great to take that effect and add it to the sound to give a different flavor to it, or even to match it up to that uh, any kind of sample you're going to use or whatever. Now it's kind of funky, right? That's how you do it. Well, check it out. We also can record the volume levels of a particular sound and the panning of that sound into our MPC sequencer while moving it on our core Triton. That information will be recorded into the MPC and that means you can record the volume of that particular sound, let's say strings, or the padding of the strings from left to the right. So we can adjust that level and make it real funky. Check this out. Now here we go. We're going to also change the volume level and you can record this in your MPC. The volume and the padding of a particular instrument on your Triton. We can go right here, we're in program, we're going to go to Mixer 1 through 8. Now we've got our strings selected right there, as you can see. There's our strings here. There's the volume for our strings. Right here is our panning. C means center. We can go from center to left and to right. Now on our MPC, we'll pan up to our MPC right here. I'm set up here on the MPC to, right here, 
to track five, main channel four. I'm going to record this information. We'll pan back down, but first I'm going to press record overdub and play start. I got that sound solid on my MPC. Now I'll press right here. I'm recording, remember that. When I press my data wheel, turn my data wheel actually, and watch. It's doing automatically now, see that? If I don't want that, I'll press stop on my MPC. And then once I press stop my MPC, I can press undo. And I want to record again. And so now I'm going to go back to record and play. I want to make sure I'm set to the top here, my level right there for 127. I press record and play. One, two, three. Now, big mind. See, it's going up and down. The time I want to have it go up and down. Go back to my MPC now. I'll take it out of solo mode. So the sound's going in and out of my mix. See that? <clears throat> and look back here at my Triton. We'll notice that. You'll hear that sound is going in and out, up and down. Now, what I can also do is do the panning. Now, if you got your outputs right and you've got your stuff split stereo wise, you can actually pan your sound. We'll go here to panning and we're going to press overdub and play on our MPC right here. We got overdub and we got play. Now we're going to go back to our Color Triton. As you can see, it's still, the like, information is recorded into our MPC and it's still triggering the volume level. Now I'll take the panning around. As you can see, In stereo, you can hear that it's floating around the mix a little bit, and that information is recorded to my MPC on that particular MIDI track. Now, once you got these tracks lined up, you want to try a little mixing thing. Press your track mute button. That's right, track mute button on your MPC and then press play. You can actually select any pad you want. Let's say from one to nine in this case, since I have nine separate tracks, I can turn a track on or off and get the feel of my mix. And then adjust my sounds to the levels I want to have them at, either in my core Triton or, drums, or adjust my drum sounds in my MPC 2000 XL. This way, you get your levels, get the right mix you want, so you get the feel of how you want that track to sound. You know what I mean? This is important. Okay, now, once you got your tracks put together, you can actually name each track in your sequence. Right now, once you got some tracks, you can always, like, what a lot of cats do, they adjust their, their, their tracks. Like, for example, I got my drums here in Timbo. I want to probably turn off some other tracks. I'll go ahead and, like, to um, here, I may turn off that track. I'll go to here, and then I'll just mute that track, press the mute button, mute that track, then go to the next track, and then mute that track, then go to the next track, and mute that track. Here, I'm playing back to the feel here.
add some more parts to your drums, put a little funkier on it, whatever. I can even go to another new track and add some more stuff to my drums and say, I can say a new track here. I'll go down, pick out my drum sounds. Say, for example, here yeah, I got some stuff here I want to use. I may go to, um, pick the right drum, actually. It's my timbo set here. sounds while I'm doing this. Press erase. And you can adjust your sounds. You can also, if you zoom in a little bit, we can press track mute right over here. Press track mute. Turn it off. Press track mute and we can see the actual tracks we have here. I can turn the tracks on or off if I'd like to. I'll press play. Each pad corresponds to a track. Like the bass track. I'm going to hit pad, my other pad over here. As you can see, as it says here, you can press the pad to turn the track off. So here, I'm going to put this other pad right here to get my little mix going on. Turn this pad on here. The rest of my sounds if I want. I'll turn all the sounds off. mix your tracks in by hitting your pad. Each track is assigned to a particular pad, as you can see right here. Track 1 is for pad 1, track 2, pad 2, 3, pad 3, 4, and so on. Up to 16 tracks, 16 different pads. And you press the pad to turn a track on or off. You get the feel of mix you want on your MPC Korg Triton combination. You know what I mean? It's fat. Back to just a groove. Okay, thanks again for watching this video. It's great that you love our videos and our DVDs. This is a great video to teach you how to use both machines. If you haven't got the MPC 2000 XL DVD, get that and get our Quark Triton DVD. Along with this one, it'll clear up a lot of the things you're not too sure about when using the two instruments. And any problems, visit SampleKings.com. And also, if you want, join the SampleKingsRecordingSchool.com. We've got a lot of information in there and we're positive it's going to help you improve your ability to make those fat tracks. I'll check you in a few. Peace out.